We talked in a previous episode about André Bloch, the mathematician turned murderer. But what about the opposite? What about a murderer who became a mathematician? This is Christopher Havens, who describes his former self like this. A drug addict with no ambition, no goals, no future. About the only thing I had going for myself is that I'd managed to stay out of serious trouble. But even this one saving grace of avoiding serious trouble disappeared in 2011 when he and accomplice Kevin Clement were arrested and convicted of murder. Having no experience behind bars, Havens believed that Hollywood trope that you have to pick a fight as soon as you enter. And when he got to the maximum security prison in Walla Walla, Washington, he got into an altercation with another inmate that would land him for almost a whole year in restrictive housing. In other words, solitary confinement. With little else to occupy his time, he began solving Sudoku puzzles and found that he was quite adept. When he was finally put back in Gen Pop, he noticed an older inmate passing out manila envelopes to other inmates. Curious about it, he asked if he might have one as well, but what he found inside was surprising. It was math homework. This daily math work was the first step in a total transformation for Havens. One day, the older inmate told Havens that he had already learned everything that he was able to teach. So Havens began devouring every book that the prison library had on mathematics, including the philosophy of math, history of math, number theory, and so on. When he ran out of books, he decided to write to UC Berkeley about possibly obtaining a subscription to a mathematical journal. In this letter, he explained, I am self-teaching myself and often get hung up on problems for long periods of time. Is there anyone who I could correspond with? There are no teachers here who can help me, so I often spend hundreds on books that may or may not contain the help I need. Thank you. This letter was passed from colleague to colleague until finally it landed on the lap of Umberto Ceruti, a professor of mathematics at University of Torino. Rather than accept this pupil sight unseen, he first decided to give Havens a mathematics problem to solve. To his surprise, Havens' reply came back with the correct answer, so the two began a friendship and a tutelage by mail. Professor Ceruti began sending textbooks and academic journals, many of which were confiscated by the mail censors of the prison. The two even began a collaboration on something called continuing fractions. This is an old concept of subdividing fractions into smaller and smaller fractions. Sort of like when Bernie Sanders talks about one quarter of one percent. For example, let's take this sort of ugly fraction of 45 sixteenths. Now we could simplify this into 2 and 13 sixteenths, or try to express it as a decimal, like this. But neither are particularly good to look at. Maybe it's better to think about this geometrically. Here's our fraction as a rectangle, with a length of 45 and a height of 16. Now we could think of this instead as two squares of 16 by 16, with a remainder of 13 sixteenths. Expressed as a fraction, it would look like this. But that 13 sixteenths can be subdivided even further by inverting the fraction. Geometrically, that would look like this. We have one square of 13 by 13, with a remainder of 3 thirteenths. Now we can continue repeating this process by subdividing this denominator further and further until all the boxes are neatly aligned and even the fraction begins to look cleaner. This might seem like a pointless exercise when it comes to rational numbers, but look at what it can do for irrational numbers. For example, pi. As a decimal, pi is an endlessly repeating string of digits with no pattern. But expressed as a continuing fraction, it's actually quite neat and elegant. And these continuing fractions have real-life applications as well, 
especially in the field of encryption, which is essential for bank software, financial systems, military communication, and even how you protect your online privacy. This is Havens Now, at an event for Pi Day hosted by the Prison Mathematics Project, a group that Havens helped found. This group includes 15 other inmates who discuss mathematics, solve problems together, and even invite guest lecturers. In Haven's own words, it's a means for inmates who are currently working on positive self-development to get together and further their resolve in making positive changes in themselves. But more impressive than all of that, in May of 2020, Haven's original discoveries on continued fractions was published in a paper called Linear Fractional Transformations and Nonlinear Leaping Convergence of Some Continued Fractions. This was published in the mathematical journal called Research in Number Theory. Havens acknowledges that his debt to his victim and to society can never be fully repaid, but he is transformed into an entirely different person and is hopeful about his future when his 25-year sentence is up. If you enjoyed this story, why don't you listen to Havens tell it in his own words at the Prison Mathematics Pi Day Celebration. It's available from the Washington State Department of Corrections blog. Check out the video description below for a link.